Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. When a child is born, there are questions that we typically ask. You know, parents ask, is he healthy? How much does he weigh? Grandparents ask, what did you name her? What, what does she look like? Nurses and doctors uh, closely examine the child and want to know, is he alert? Are her lungs clear? And we expect these kinds of questions when a baby is born. But there are other questions that we never expect to hear at the birth of a healthy child. We would, I mean, who would ever ask, who will handle his funeral arrangements someday? Or what cemetery do you think she'll be buried in? Or what will cause his death? For everything there is a season, the scriptures say, and the season for asking about a person's death is usually not at his or her birth. One of our hymns, the one we just sang, asks a similar, unusual question about a child born in Bethlehem. What child is this? However, it's a fitting question because this child is born in a most unusual way. His mother is a virgin. His birth is announced by a heavenly host praising God. So what child is this? Is this the wonderful answer is proclaimed by an angel I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people for unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord what child is this he is the Lord himself the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord whose voice breaks the cedars, now coos softly in his mother's arms. The same Lord who told the shepherd Moses to not come near because the Lord's presence was too holy, now invites shepherds to draw near to him as he lies in a manger, a helpless child. You know, the shepherd Moses hid his face from the Lord, but now shepherds behold the Lord's face in the face of a little baby. The unapproachable one is now approachable. The intimidating one is now inviting. And that certainly is good news. But what makes God's appearance in human flesh good news of great joy is that he came in order to redeem us. The Lord of creation became part of creation in order to recreate what man had broken. The immortal one was born in a specific time and place to unite himself forever with his mortal creatures. The reason why it is good news of great joy is that at this child's birth we do ask the normally unthinkable question, How will this child die? For this child was born to die. This was God's plan even before the child was born. This is what the heavenly angels are talking about when they say his birth will bring peace on earth. This child will die because of us and he will die for us. The prophet Isaiah said, to us a child is born. The angel said, unto you is born this day a savior. Unto us, whose worldly passions conceive and give birth to worldly thoughts and ungodly living. Unto us, whose sinful hearts give birth to cruel and hurtful words. Even against those who love us most. Unto us whose sinful natures drive us to live as though God does not matter and we matter most. Unto us, sinners, the child is born. What child is this? The one who had a Mary at his birth and multiple Marys at his death. What child is this? 
the one who had a righteous Joseph at his birth and a righteous Joseph at his death. What child is this? The one who has wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger at his birth and was wrapped in a shroud and laid in a tomb at his death. What child is this? The one whose birth was honored by wise men bearing myrrh and whose death was honored by faithful women bearing myrrh to his tomb. What child is this? This child is the great light that has shined on us who dwell in a land of deep darkness, who walk in darkness. What child is this? This is a real human child who has a real human body. His body was wrapped up and laid in a tomb, but on the third day, his real human body came back to life again. The first fruits of the resurrection of our human bodies. The grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people in this child. So let's do something that's normal at the birth of a child. Let's look closely at the son of Mary. The prophet Isaiah said that all authority would be upon those little shoulders. That this child used his authority to set you free from hell and destruction. Look closely at this child. He has the lips of the wonderful counselor. He comforts your troubled conscience with the most wonderful counsel you could ever hear. I forgive you all of your sins. Look closely at this child. He has the hands of the mighty God. He has set aside that might to have his hands nailed to a cross and extend mercy to you through his holy meal. Look closely at this child. He has the arms of the everlasting Father, arms that spread out on a cross to draw you to himself, to wrap his arms around you in holy baptism, to welcome you home as prodigal sons and daughters. Look closely at this child. He has the royal head of the Prince of Peace, but his head was crowned with thorns in order to place on your heads crowns of glory. The grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people. Today, that salvation is again extended to you as a gift from this child's altar. It's Christmas and Jesus is giving you the best gift his very body and blood, a gift that forgives your sins, renews your zeal for serving your neighbor, and inflames your love. What a wondrous gift of love this is. What child is this? This is the Lord who has saved you. So haste, haste to bring him laud, Hail, hail the Word made flesh. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the Son of Mary, born for you. Merry Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen.